Hey everybody, welcome to Pop Culture Philosophers. I'm Rockin' Robbie Billups, and today I'm going to be talking about my top five favorite vault comics. That's right, everybody. Welcome to Robbie's Top 5. It's the show where I list my personal top five favorite whatevers. And today I'm going to spotlight Vault Comics. Vault Comics has burst onto the scene in the last couple years, and they have just been cranking out consistent, solid, next-level, super imaginative work, great sci-fi and fantasy comic books, brilliant artwork, great writing, great characters, resonating themes, everything that I've read from Vault Comics I have enjoyed in one form or another. They're just slam-bang, just just they're batting a thousand right now absolutely right um some books are not going to make this list some of them have just gotten started some haven't even started yet it's a couple that haven't started yet that i've read the first issues friendo and these savage shores be on the lookout for those really great stuff there's a new one called fearscape that's really exciting and looks really really promising submerged is two issues in right now vagrant queens out there but these right here are going to be my personal at this moment in time because I'm sure it will change as their catalog grows deeper and deeper, right? But I'm so impressed with all comics, so I really want to spotlight them, so let's get right into it. At number five, we got Songs for the Dead, written by Andrea Fort, Michael Christopher Heron, with artwork by Sam Beck and lettering by And World Design. This book is a great, fun fantasy. It's a real simple story, but it also has a lot of deep, rich character work in it as well. It centers around this character named Bethany, and she's a bard, and this is kind of like a fantasy setting, right? And she's a necromancer, meaning that she can bring the dead back to life and control them in a way. And it's got this really nice, whimsical sense to it, right? So she's on this journey to try to find um, the, the Covenant, which is this, like, organization of necromancers. And necromancers are, are looked down on in society. They, they're mostly evil, or at least they're considered evil, but she wants to prove that necromancers can be good. So she winds up with this woman joining her up, joining up with her as kind of like a bodyguard, and they go on this journey, and it's really, really fun, really cool, really clever, really neat, and like I said, very whimsical, cool fantasy stuff. I'm not usually the biggest fantasy fan, but this one I found very endearing on the strength of the characters alone. The characters ring true. It's four issues are out so far right now. Um, that's the first story. That trade's going to be coming out soon. I'll throw links below to all this stuff if you want to check them out. Um, this one was really, really cool. It gets dark and macabre when it needs to as well. So it's not just some kind of light fairy tale. It definitely has a little bit of high stakes and some darkness in it as well. At number four, we have Deep Roots, written by Dan Waters, with artwork by Val Rodriguez, coloring by Trion O'Farrell, and lettering by Adia Bidikar. This book is crazy bonkers awesome. It was the first one to make the pick of the week, the first Vault Comics. The first issue was very, very strong, very ethereal, very abstract. The basic idea of Deep Roots is that there's this other world that lies right alongside of ours. Think about, like, the Upside Down. And this is where all the, the creatures from mythology and folklore live, in the background of the world, and things like that. Well, because of man's uh, desecration of our world, like because because of our, our mis mistreatment of our planet and, and, and things like that, right? So this world, which is kind of, come, they come through this world like with plants. So they're like plant gods and things like that. But that's where all the folklore is based is in this other world. So the other world starts invading into our world and, and basically plants wreaking their, their, their revenge. And it's awesome. It is so fun. Beautiful, beautiful artwork. Rodriguez's artwork is amazing. Feral's colors on top of it. When you're in the other world, they do this cool little thing where the artwork looks like it's tree rings and it's really cool, very abstract. It's also got just great characters that are going on along in it and a really cool concept. And then, of course, you got this like this mythological barbarian beast that they're trying to find. This book is cool. It's really interesting. It's kind of like, you know, the upside down from Stranger Things, but a little bit more, a little bit more hopeful at times, but still very, very depressing. It's got great things in it, wild things in it, like Brussels sprouts, Brussels sprout people holding up banks and things like that, termites that have been changed by plants to eat through concrete. So this is basically the plant world wreaking its vengeance on man's world, right? Because we've just let it go too far. It's kind of like that movie, The Happening, but really, really good and way more fantasy driven, way more just nutso with some of its abstract ideas. I love this book so much. The characters ring true. I just love it. At number three is Soja Khan, written by Colin Kelly and Jackson Lansing, with artwork by Nathan Gooden, coloring by Vittorio Astoni, and lettering by Darren Bennett. This book was a treat. I finally recently read it for the first time just a couple weeks ago. I loved it so much. Hit hard. Really, really hit home. It's such a great book. Amazing artwork, cool fantasy sci-fi type stuff. Basically, the story involves around this woman who has recently lost her son. 
So she's going through this really, she's in this really dark place. She's kind of depressed. Um, she's not able to pull herself out of it. And all of a sudden she becomes unstuck in time while being zapped to this other world. So she goes to this other world and there's all these like very primitive creatures around her, right? And the next thing you know, she flashes forward maybe a thousand years and those creatures evolved a little bit further, right? So she keeps doing this maybe a thousand years here, maybe a, a million years here, but basically you see the evolution of this planet and her influence on this planet through the story all along with the theme of her dealing with the loss of her son. Beautiful stuff, great script, beautiful artwork, really conveys the story structurally very, very well. The artwork, the words combined, the images, everything is there. It's perfect. Soji Khan is amazing. That's the name of the world. She almost, in a way, becomes the god of this world. And it's just a great exploration into things like nature versus uh, nurture and uh, evolution and creation and, and, and the influence of religion and, and philosophy and things like that. Really great stuff. Soji Khan was so brilliant. It's out in trade paperback right now. Like I said, links down below. Number two is going to be Wasted Space by Michael Morisi, Hayden Sherman, Jason Wardy, and Jim Campbell. I love this book. It's basically like Preacher in space in a gritty, dark, dank, grimy, we've messed everything up kind of space, right? But it's Preacher because it's about this dude who was basically a prophet. He had the voice of the creator in his head. The creator told him to lead the people in a certain direction and that turned out to lead to oppression and this evil tyrannical emperor that now rules, right? So then he just left, quit, and he goes off and just gets wasted and now he is wasted space. He spends his time just just hanging around, gambling, drinking, doing drugs, crazy things like that. Um, he's got this buddy who is like a killer robot, but also like a lover robot kind of mixed into one. And then he's called back in by a young woman who also now experiences these visions and says that I need to bring you back in. We got to save the day. So it becomes this whole cool tale about this guy and his partners, his team, um, trying to make the creator answer for himself and overthrow this evil empire that he helped create because of the voice of the creator. So you get this big mystery of who is the creator and all kinds of stuff, stuff like that. A great uh, sci-fi uh, space type setting. Hayden Sherman's artwork is great. It's raw. It's gritty. It's edgy. It's rough. It's perfect for this story. It's perfect for just the, the craziness of the story. High action, really fun stuff. This book is great. It's got great, nice, subtle themes and right in your face themes. Um, Maurice does a great job crafting the story. Great stuff in the spirit of Star Wars, but a little bit more mature, a little bit more questioning. Um, like I said, Preacher in Space with a dose of Philip K. Dick. That's what this book feels like to me. Wasted Space, one of the best books of 2018, I guarantee it. First Trade is out pretty much almost right now, so be on the lookout for that. Five issues in, this book's going 20. Very, very excited. At number one, we got Maxwell's Demons by Dennis Camp as the writer, Vittorio Astoni as the artist, and the lettering is done by Adia Bidikar. This book is amazing. It was my very first Vault comic. I picked it up, saw it on the shelf, thought it looked a little interesting, opened it up, fell in love with the artwork. Astoni's artwork is beautiful. It's luscious. The coloring, by the way, is fantastic. And he colors other books from Vault, by the way. Like he colored um, a Soja Khan, for instance, right? Yes, he colored Soja Khan. Great stuff. Loved the artwork. It drew me in. I read the book and what really kept me just nailed into this book, along with the art, is Dennis Camp's script. Amazing, imaginative, Brilliant, crazy ideas, loves that stuff. Love crazy things like that, right? So it basically centers around this kid named Maxwell Mass, and he's got this bri brilliant imagination, and he can create all these different things and doorways to other worlds, and he turns his his like stuffed animals and toys into like companion robots, and he goes off and has these adventures. Meanwhile, his dad's there, his dad's an alcoholic. They recently have lost Max's mom at some point in the future. They're both dealing with it in their own separate ways. So it really is a story about imagination, but it's also a story about emotion and how the grieving process goes and how people deal with things and how a father and a son can come disconnected after a tragedy like that. But it doesn't just show it from Max's perspective where the dad's like this villainous type creature. Um, Camp really adds this dimension and this layer to the father that really adds like a really nice touch to make it not so just one or two dimensional, but like four to five to six to even all the way to 11 dimensions, this relationship between father and son is. But the book's even more but then just that, that's kind of the root, kind of the core, but it's about imagination. It's about ideas, it's about concepts. In the second issue, the story goes completely another way, and but it still gets tied in, really interesting clues, but each issue is done as a standalone story. It can be read on its own and enjoyed, but overall, when you read these three issues, because three out of the five are out so far, it just 
makes this wonderful tapestry of ideas, of, of richness, the power of imagination, and, 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 and just the, the relationship between Max and his father. I love it. So much crazy stuff. We have no idea where this is going. It's unexpected, everything that happens. So many ideas in issue two alone that would just fuel writers' careers for their entire career, right? Um, Maxwell's Demons is the book that led me into Vault Comics, and I'm so thankful for it. Um, Dennis Camp is an amazing writer. As Tony is a brilliant artist, it's absolutely my favorite work from my absolute favorite comic book company right now. So that's my top five. That's my top five Vault Comics. What Vault Comics do you love? What's your top five? Let me know in the comments down below. And join us in two weeks for another Robbie's Top Five, where in the spirit of Halloween, we'll be talking about my top five favorite horror movies. Very exciting. They're going to be my personal ones. So if you want to know what horror movies to check out for Halloween this year, check us out in two weeks for that video right here on Robbie's Top 5 on the Pop Culture Philosophers YouTube channel. And be sure to check us out at popculturephilosophers.com for podcasts and a whole lot more. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I've been rocking Robbie Billups. Thanks for rocking with us. Keep on top fiving.